Welcome to another edition of the Sim Racing Garage. I'm Barry Rowland, and today we'll be reviewing the Husingveld Engineering's Ultimate Pedal Set for Sim Racing. As most of you know, we've already done a review on the Husingveld Pro Pedals, and we really like that set of pedals. The Ultimates are Neil's design of a no-holds-barred, top-of-the-line pedal set for simulating the feel of a race car's pedals. So, let's put them through their paces in a Sim Racing Garage review and find out how they perform. So now let's take a quick look at what comes in the box when you order your set of pedals. Of course, your pedals come in the box. And you also get a bag of spacers, different size spacers. We have black ones and smaller white ones or thinner white ones. And some extra washers thrown in there. We also get the bumpers or rubber bumpers. The different durometers. The white ones are the softest ones, the green being the hardest one. And we'll actually look at the durometer ratings on these when we get to the overview part of the review. And we get this nice tool set. It's got uh, two five millimeter, two four millimeter, a three and a two, and a little wrench here, a regular wrench, so that you can work on your pedals. It used to come with a little screwdriver. In fact, the pros you saw, just want to mention that, there's no screwdriver in this one because you no longer need the screwdriver with this set of pedals because this is the latest updated ones that have the controller, which we'll show next. This is the new controller that comes with the kit, and it has the actual RJ11 uh, phone type jacks that uh, we'll plug the pedals into instead of having to use the screwdriver, as you saw before, and put the wires in and then tighten each, wire, each uh, screw down on top of a wire, which is very neat. Uh, I can't wait to put this on there because it's a lot simpler than messing with the wires. So that's about it that comes in the box. Now we'll get to the overview part of the review and go from there. So let's take a look at the throttle pedal first. Uh, first I want to point out that uh, the pedals he's, uh, that Niels is shipping now all have this bead blasted finish on them. Let's see if I can get you a closer look at how that looks. And it's a very nice finish. It's kind of a satiny feel to it. I really like this finish. Um, it's, it gives a little bit of classy look to the pedal, but it doesn't take away from the nice industrial race car uh, pedal look that I like so much. Not that I didn't like the uh, naked stainless steel finish on the Pros, I kind of like that too. But uh, this is also very nice. Uh, my only question was when I saw this and felt it, I said, wow, this is so nice. Uh, I feel like I'm going to wear this off of the pedal face here, the pedal plate or pad that you actually make contact with your shoe with. And I can uh, attest uh, that that has not happened to date, which I'm very pleased. Uh, I use uh, some Alpine Stars racing shoes because uh, they're very comfortable to race in and drive in in general, and they give you a great feel with their thin soles on the pedal face. And I've been using these for three weeks. As you can see, there's not a whole lot of anything going on there. And I've used these uh, at least a full hour a day on the, s on the slow days and on the heavy days, you know, three hours I've been putting on these pedals. And there's not a mark on them. So very nice. Uh, I was a little bit surprised about the durability there. I thought for sure there would be a nice shiny sheen where my uh, foot had made contact with the pedal. But uh, so far, so good. It hasn't seen anything like that. Um, let's move on to the uh, spring that we use is used for the resistance. Uh, there's a nice knurled. Uh, little knob here now instead of the typical uh, double locking nut configuration you'll see on these pedals. And that's kind of nice. You can just turn this knurled nut he here and uh, then, of course, tighten up your 10 millimeter nut on top of that to keep it from backing out to change your preload. Uh, it's, it's a very nice little touch. Again, Neil's always uh, making little improvements to his pedals whenever he can. Uh, this is set up in a slot here that will go up and down. And of course, the higher you have it, the more resistance you'll have in the spring, the lower and the less resistance. Uh, these pedals can really be dialed into very extreme and not very extreme uh, configurations uh, with the adjustments in them. And moving right down to this dampener. Now, when I first saw the pictures of this dampener installed on the throttle pedal and the rest of the pedals in the Ultimate set, I kind of wondered what the heck was going on there because I've never seen anything like that. And I thought, well, what's the purpose of that? It's just a damper. This little gas-charged piston in here. And it's hard to explain until you actually feel it, but when you actually press this down, it has uh, some kind of a, it feels like a smoothing effect or something. It's, everything is just so smooth, and you can feel that. You can feel that, that, uh, that dampener actually working. And I have it on its lowest setting right now. If I had it on its highest setting, you could even feel it even more very curious that it would give me that feel that is really nice. I kind of like it. Uh, 
Uh, I'm very surprised by that. I just thought it might be a, a gimmick thing, and it turns out that uh, you can really use it to actually increase some of the tension on the pedal, too, or the way it feels. So just another thing to be able to adjust to adjust the pedal feel the way you like it. Very cool. It has the new uh, blue bumpers that uh, you saw on the review that I did on the Pro Set. And it also has, of course, all of them have the load cells. And this load cell on the throttle has a piece of uh, plexiglass that mounts to the bottom of the load cell. And then there's a spring in there. Let's see if I can get you to see that spring. And you see that. And it connects to the plastic plate here. It's right inside there. Oops, let me turn around so you can see it. And when we move the pedal down, it moves that plastic or rather a plexiglass plate there and it pushes down on the load cell spring, which pushes down on the load cell, which sends a signal to our control board. Very nice. Uh, very simple setup, um, and simple in my book is very good. I don't like too much of a complication as far as um, mechanics on making something work because that just makes more things uh, available to you to go wrong. Uh, of course, you can adjust the travel by the bumper going back and forth in its slot there, and Back here, you can see there's actually a what I would call a, a preload adjustment for the actual hydraulic cylinder in here, too, that little gas charge piston. Let's see, what else we have? Oh, okay, I almost forgot. We got the new plugs on these. These are the new RJ11 phone type plugs that uh, Niels is putting on all his pedals now. And of course, that's going to make it easy for us to hook into our controller board because, as we saw before, in the in the uh, what's in the box kind of nice. Uh, configuration he has here. So we can just plug and play now. Very nice. All right. Anything else I want to talk about the throttle pedal? Nah, I guess that's it. Let's go ahead and move on to the clutch pedal. So now we'll get the clutch pedal and take a look at it. All right. It's very similar as far as setup in the way it's configured as the clutch pedal that we saw on the Pro Kit or set. It's, uh, of course, a lot more heavy duty, and you can actually dial in a heck of a lot of force in this clutch. And as you might see, I've been using this, like I said before, about three weeks, and I have it down here on the bottom, and also have the dampener down the bottom. But it's a pretty, actually a pretty light clutch feel when you have it set like this. So don't get, uh, a lot of people say that the ultimates are just, you just can't use them, they're too hard to press. But really, th with the adjustments available in these things, they're not very hard to press at all, I don't think, anyway, uh, once you get them dialed into where you want them to. But you do have to fiddle with them a bit to get them there. All right. So we also have the dampener, like we had in the throttle, in the clutch. And it is also adjusted up and down for more up top. You get more pressure. Down, you get less. And it has the same kind of thing that the throttle did as far as the preload for the dampener. And here we have the preload adjustment, a very nice knurled piece. And we saw a plastic one in the throttle spring, but this is a heavier duty spring from the clutch, so this is actually made out of steel. And of course we have the locking 10 millimeter nut in there also to adjust. And of course we can adjust the tension that we have or the, the way the clutch feels by moving the holes up and down. And you can see here, I have this all the way down here, but remember you have to have it all the way down on the back too to give it that keep the configuration right or the geometry right so you get that correct pedal or clutch feel when you press the pedal. Anything else? Um, this has the, the load cell on the bottom too. And of course, uh, you can see on all of them have these really nice brass bushings on the pivot points. This load cell on the bottom uh, doesn't have the plastic like the throttle does, but there is still a spring in there as you can see. And it's attached to, again, the plastic plate that's inside. Let me get you to see that plastic plate there. I hope you can see it in there. There's a plastic plate right in there. And of course, the spring's attached to the top of that. And when you push down on it, just like the throttle, that sends the uh, signal over to the board. Uh, anything else we're going to talk about? Um, this has an adjustment, just like the pros do, for addressing the tilt angle on the pedals. If I had these inverted in a GT configuration, and I had it flat on my rig, mounted upside down, but on a flat block or a flat piece of profile or something, you can see the pedal is kind of like straight up and down, which you wouldn't want if you had your pedals configured this way. So you loosen this and these up here, and this whole body can drop down and tilt forward. So it'll kick out that pedal plate and give you the angle you need to give you the real uh, GT pedal or hanging pedal configuration.
Very cool. That's another thing I really like about uh, these separate pedal sets that you can buy or p sets that you can buy that have separate pedals because you can mount them any way you want to. And it just gives you a lot more uh, leeway for uh, future proofing the pedals that you buy. All right, anything else? Again, the RJ45 on this one and the, the nice finish. And I've been doing some heel and toe on this, and you can see it's still a beautiful finish on there. Again, <laughs> I can't say uh, how enough how shocked I am that <laughs> there's no wear, uh, obvious wear anyway yet on these pedal faces from uh, me. I don't really uh, use them aggressively. So it's a very good finish on these. I'm really impressed. Okay, now we'll do the brake pedal. And again, it's the same finish as the others are. It has the stack. And if you notice, uh, the first thing I want to talk about is the way the stack works. You can see that he's actually got it to where there's some play here, or movement, or space, or whatever you want to call it, that simulates the compression in a real car of the hydraulics through a system. And this is adjustable. He's got spacers in here. He's got a big fat spacer here. You see that? And then he has a smaller spacer behind that. There's actually room, plenty of room actually, for one more spacer, which actually will give you less of that feel. And you can actually put another spacer in to get rid of it entirely. So that's, that part of it is completely adjustable, not just the durometer or the rubbers that you have back here, which is very cool. A another thing about these pedals, they're just, uh, you know, it's just amazing amount of adjustability in them to get to the feel that you want. Let's talk about the dampener here. Now on this pedal, as you can see, there's no adjustment for the brake uh, piston here. There's just no adjustment because there's so much force that are, you're capable of putting on this brake pedal. You don't have to use that much force, but there's so much force available here that there's no way you could put a slot there because it would probably move when you're really jamming on that brake real hard. And you can see up front here, there is an adjustment for the dampener. Now I've got the dampener all the way up because to be quite honest, I really, I can't feel the dampener because the, uh, this pedal is such a heavy duty pedal. It's hard for me to feel the effects of that dampener. I haven't really noticed them. I'm going to keep playing with it a little bit because I haven't really been adjusting too much on the dampener. I've been focusing mainly on the stack here for the travel and how it feels. And we'll talk a little about, about that in the adjustments. And of course it has the preload uh, that the uh, other dampeners have also. So that is adjustable, but it's not taking the brunt like this piston or this, this rod that runs through here. It takes all the, all the force from the pedal. Let's see what else we can talk about. Of course, it has the blue spacer, like all of them, the new upgraded uh, travel limiter. And of course, that's not adjustable either because, again, so much pressure you're putting on this, um, it would just shove it to the back. and It wouldn't stay if it was in a, like in the front of a slot that was put in there. Too much force. And we have uh, holes here instead of uh, the pros actually uh, had slots in them. These are actually individual holes because, again, <laughs> the force that this thing is putting on the brakes is, is if there was a slot here, we just push it right down. And so you'd never be able to set it to where you want it and keep it. So Niels, being the engineer he is, and decided that, uh, of course, holes were the only way to go there. Now, the configuration on this pedal is, this is actually two pieces. These plates here are actually two different plates that are connected together uh, by the load cell itself. I don't know if you can see that. See that? There's a little space down inside of there. So these two pieces of metal are separate from these two pieces of metal that form the, bop, the front part of the pedal. And of course, that's a pivot point based on the load cell. So as the load cell gets pushed down, that's where the pivot point is. And of course, it's not going to move too much because you can put a lot of pressure on this load cell. How much pressure? Well, look at this. I took the spacer bar that you definitely don't want to leave out <laughs> on these brake pedals just so we could see or get a better look at what the load cell looks like. And you can see, just like the rest of them, it's a Mavin. And you can see that it's a very a lot of kilograms rating on this. This is a 200 kilogram load cell. That's huge. That, that's a lot of pressure it can take, being rated at 200 kilograms. I'm never going to put that kind of pressure on this pedal. And we'll see in the calibration uh, of the pedal, even when I push it down as hard as I can, I, I'm not maxing this thing out anywhere close. Um, again, I'm only 150 pounds and 5.8, so I don't have a lot of pressure to put on it anyway. But that's a, a very heavy-duty load cell. I don't think that's ever going to break. Now, of course, electronics inside might go bad, but as far as wear and tear, I'm sure it'll take anything that I can dish out or most people can dish out on a brake pedal. Now, again, it has the RJ45 on it, 
Anything else we want to talk about on the brake pedal? We'll talk a, more, a lot more about the brake pedal adjustments uh, when we get to the adjustment part. But I am going to take a second here to talk about the durometers or the, the bumpers on this pedal. Let me just keep it out here, I guess, so I can use that as my background. Okay. So the bumpers that we use in the load cell brakes for HE engineering and for uh, actually any brake really that uses the bumpers, it can be load cell or it can be hydraulic, they have different durometer ratings. And this is important to know the durometer ratings if you're going to be adjusting your pedals and are just using the bumpers in general. Uh, the bumpers, of course, are in the shaft of the pedal on a load cell based pedal, and they're sitting on the slave cylinders in a hydraulic based uh, brake pedal. It's important to me, anyway, to know these durometers. Of course, uh, when the manufacturer gives us these pedals a lot of times, they'll uh, you know, tell us, well, the green one's the hard one, and the white one's the soft one. <laughs> but um, I want to know a little bit more about that because they do wear, they do g uh, age on you, and it's good to know when they start breaking down so you can replace them. Also, uh, if I want to play around with some durometers, I can uh, experiment with different durometers and buy them and source them and know exactly what I'm looking for because I know what the durometer rating is on these rubber bumpers. Also, you'll notice here, it gives you an idea of how the brake pedal is going to feel. Now, the bumpers are used to give us travel or take away travel, but they also have their own feel when you press on them. And if you'll notice here, I have a green one and two white ones on here. When I had just a bunch of white ones in here for a GT pedal, it, it didn't feel, it felt a little, I don't want to, I guess I want to say mushy a little bit maybe. Um, it just didn't feel right to me. And I put a green one in, which is harder than the white ones, and that gave it a progressive feel that I really liked. On a, and this is a set up as a GT pedal. Now, of course, if I set it up for an F1 pedal and it only has one green one in there and a bunch of spacers, then it's going to be a pretty hard pedal. It's not going to be much travel at all in it. But anyway, Getting back to the durometer ratings of the bumpers, this let me know that if I put the harder one in with the two softers, it was a way to experiment and see if I like that. Now, when you're getting the durometer rating off a bumper, you need to have a tool. And this is the tool I use. And I'll give you a little close-up look of it here. Let's get some focus. There we go. And this is a what we call a dial-type durometer. It's got a little pin on the bottom here, and it's the pin is depressed against this machine. It has a, a flat machine surface here to put against the rubber. And once you press that, the dial moves. It's pretty simple. And on the top, there's a little space here to put your index finger so you can balance it or have more control over it when you're pressing down the, durom or the bumper rather to get your durometer reading. And these, this one is actually, I think, about 50 bucks shipped. It's not that much money. Uh, you can get them cheaper. They make some electronic ones. But I like this one because it's the old dial type. And it's steel. I like uh, metal stuff. It feels more substantial in your hand. Now, what you're supposed to use here, oh, by the way, before I go to that, let's talk about that. You'll see on this dial here, it has what they call a shore rating. And this one is a shore rating of an A right there. They make different shore ratings, a B, a C, and all that means is uh, a B will go to like from a 100 to 200 or even 0 to 200, and a C even goes up to 300. But you're not going to need that for these uh, bumpers that we'll be measuring on our for use for our brake pedals. Uh, because they're just, uh, they're not that hard. And just to give you an idea of what you can get away with with the 100, this is the spacer that, or uh, one of the spacers that uh, Niels provides in his pedal kits, and they're just hard plastic. All right, so it's very hard. And there's a little flex to it, but mostly it's hard. And if we put this, you now you're supposed to put this on the bench or a flat surface and then press down on it to get your best readings. And that's how I would do it. But because <laughs> video is up here, the camera's up here, I gotta come to the camera. So, and it still works fine. And what I'll do is I'll put that on there and just get it flush with that machine flat surface on the bottom of the gauge. And you can see that it uh, has a rating of, let me move it around here. And that's on getting towards 90. So again, this is a hard plastic spacer and it doesn't max out this gauge. So this is all you're gonna need for getting the durometer readings off your bumpers. Now let's take a look at the green ones that he puts in the kit. That one is, let's see, I'm looking at, it uh, looks like 85 to me. Well, 84 maybe. It's hard for me to see it when it's in the uh, video camera, but yeah, it's about 85, I think, when you get a good solid set on it. There it is. 
So the green ones are 85. And the white ones, let's see what we get on those. I'm looking at about, let me put it on the table here. So. so that looks like about 75 also. Let's hold it up here so you guys can look at it. So let me get a clear shot. See, it's not as accurate when you hold it in your hand. There's no doubt about that. <laughs> In fact, it's moving around too much for you to see it. But anyway, it's 75 when I put it on the table. You can see it even goes up to 80 in some places here. That's kind of trying to get a regular one. That actually went up to 80. Mm. Oops. Let me get it back on the uh, table here. Yeah, 75. It's just because I'm holding my fingers. It's not as stable as it would be if I had it on the table. And it's... Uh, and it's probably mushing a little bit further. But anyway, it is 75. Now, I actually have a bumper because I still have the Husingfeld Engineering's Pro Pedals. I still have a bumper from there. So I'll try that one and see what it rates at. And that was actually 77. Let's see if I can get this little one to read right. Yeah, so you can see that one's actually reading good when I'm holding it. 77. So it's actually harder than the white one that it comes in the ultimate kit. But because this is the only bumper you get in the pro kit, maybe that's why it's a little bit harder to cover more area. Now I asked Niels about this. I, s I asked him, I said, well, can you provide um, one of these, a green one, in a smaller, a smaller compact package? <laughs> and uh, that way people can stack these and get the same kind of progressive feel in their brake pedal. And he said, well, actually, uh, that most people that get the pro pedals, if they talk about the bumpers, all they're asking for is softer bumpers than these. They don't even talk about uh, going harder than it is. He says a lot of them, uh, a lot of people like to um, race in their socks. But I tell you, these pros are HE uh, ultimate pedal sets. I would never use socks on them. They're just, uh, it's just too hard on your feet, I would imagine. Uh, I use shoes. Anyway. So that gives you an example of what the different uh, durometers are of these particular bumpers. And if I was going to source some other bumpers to experiment with or somebody had some I wanted to try, then I could just put my meter on them and I can pretty much just tell by the number I'm getting of where that would be and if I could use it or not and if I would want to experiment even or not. And again, back to the old thing, I got an 85 baseline on these now. So later on when I pull them out of the stack uh, half a year or a year from now or whenever, and measure them, then they might break down, be breaking down then, and uh, I'll know it. So I'll know it's time to replace them. All right, so I guess that pretty much covers anything uh, that I want to talk about as far as durometers of the bumpers that we have. And uh, again, this is a nice little tool to have uh, just to measure the degradation over a period of time of your bumpers, if nothing else. But it's also fun to play around with bumpers, and that's the cool thing about a pedal that has this kind of system in it. Uh, sure, they're going to wear, and you have to replace it, but you know, Racing is wearing stuff and replacing it, or wearing stuff out and replacing it. Um, and the hydraulics are the same way. Uh, and you really need something like this if you want to play around a little bit and keep an accurate reading on everything. And it's not that expensive, and like I said, it's fun to use it. You guys might not think so, but I have a lot of fun doing this kind of stuff just to see where everything is. And also the consistency across the bumpers, too, because this one was 85. And if I look at the little one here, Let's see what fiber flex, how consistent they are. And that's 85 also. So both of these are right on the same durometer reading, which also tells me that fiber flex has a very, uh, very low tolerance. And I'll show you the name again. Where is it? There it is, fiber flex. Uh, their tolerances are very tight on the uh, ratings for the durometers on these bumpers. So these are very nice bumpers. I've, s I've pulled out other bumpers out of packages before, and they were all over the place. <laughs> and they're supposed to be the same hardness. So that's another thing, again, it's valuable to have one of these so you can tell what's going on. I sent them back and said I can't use them. Alrighty, let's go ahead and move on to the adjustments on these uh, ultimate pedals and we'll see you there. Alright, pedal adjustments. We'll start with the throttle pedal. Now if you saw my Pro or Husevelt Engineering Pro Pedal review, I uh, went into pretty intricate detail on how to do all the adjustments. Um, but I'm not going to really do that on the ultimate pedals because they're so similar. There's really not a lot of differences, and where there are differences, I'll just point that out. Of course, you have the 
face that can be adjusted up and down. And if you look back here in the back, you can see there's actually uh, three holes. And I right now have it at the very highest hole possible. So that's where I've been using it because of where how I sit in my cockpit in my uh, Simex rig. I kind of sit uh, very low with my feet straight out from me. My butt's only about one inch uh, higher than my heels are when they're sitting on the pedals. So that it's just more comfortable for me to have it there. But it's all it is is a, a nut back here, 10 mil or 8 millimeter nut with a washer, and you have a 3 millimeter hex in the front here. And of course, all those tools are included with your handy dandy toolkit that you get with your Ultimate pedals along that came with the Pro pedals, came with the same kind of kit. Now, moving further down, this is where the spring is, and it's similar to the one on the Pro also, because it has, uh, but it had the locking nut configuration for, this for the preload spring. And this has the new, as I showed before in the overview, the plasticky or urethane uh, knurled knob, which makes it a lot easier and quicker to make those adjustments. And once you made the adjustments, you just uh, would hold the knob and tighten down that 10 millimeter nut there, and that would lock it down. But really, it's not going to go anywhere. Um, the dampeners is different. That's what's different about this and the pros. And it's very similar to the way you adjust it. Because these uh, pedals are working in a fulcrum configuration with a pivot point down here, the lower we take either one of these, the spring and these slots, if it goes down to the bottom of the slot and I go down to the bottom here, that's the easiest push on the pedal. And that's where I have it set and I've been using it there. And it's very comfortable, actually. Uh, it really is easy to push, but it has a very good feeling to it. I'm still going to play with the dampener down here and put it up and down as far as the dampener force and feel and see how that feels. Uh, but I just haven't decided yet where I want that. Um, down here, you can see the stop bumper, and that has a very simple adjustment either back or forth. And I'll have this all the way to the back. And I tried this halfway, and I could actually see when I went into DI view and uh, adjusted these pedals that. If I have it all the way back, I can get a resolution of 2600 on this off this load cell in DI view. If I put it halfway up in the slot, it's less travel, of course, and it also only gives me about 2250 to 2300 resolution. Now, the SIM software that we run these days really probably doesn't care either way, but because of the length of the travel, um, when you calibrate it and say eye racing, it makes a difference when it has the longer travel than in the shorter travel because I have more steps. Uh, you don't get any more steps. Let me take that back. I think there's only like 255 steps you can get off a of USB. But because you have a longer throw, those steps are stretched out as far as the increments of those steps. So you still get a more precise pedal feel when I'm racing and I, I go through that full stroke there, it's easy to just give a little bit of gas coming out of the corner so I'm not spinning and then go ahead and get the rest of it when you get out of the corner and you're on the straight again. It's just easier to modulate the throttle with um, it set up with it all the way at the back. Now it is a pretty long throw, but because of how I'm seated in my rig, it really doesn't matter. It's still comfortable for me, so I'm gonna leave it there. Uh, let's see what other adjustments we can do. Of course, the uh, Back right here is the adjustment that we looked in the overview or if you had these set up in a GT um, style of pedal configuration in your rig and you had this mounted to the top of your rig, you could actually loosen these and this whole body and loosen these two, of course, at the front. And this whole body would drop down. Though this would stay attached to your rig, but the whole body would drop down to where they would tilt out into a proper GT angle. So the dampener also has a preload, and you can see here, a little closer there. And that's another slot, and I can move that up or back and change the preload on the dampener, which is very cool. That's, uh, not only can I change the dampener up effect up front here, but I can also increase the dampening effect on a preload situation, which is very cool. All right, there's really not a whole lot to this. It's uh, pretty simple to set this pr throttle pedal up. So the next one we're going to do is gonna, we'll go ahead and do the brake pedal next. Okay, now we've got the brake pedal, and this is very simple to adjust also. If you'll see here, this actually has a dampener in this brake pedal. And I'll get to the stack in a second here. Um, you could adjust that just like you could on the throttle up or down. But I have to be honest, I, I cannot, like I said in the overview, I really haven't felt the effect of this dampener. Maybe it's just me, but I just, it just, maybe it doesn't get enough travel on the dampener. And I have it set up as a GT pedal right now. Maybe it just doesn't get enough travel when I'm pressing it. 
to let me feel the effects of it, but I'm still playing with this. And I have it, as you can see, in the front, it's maxed. So that's the most force I can get out of it. And I have the preload about halfway, because it has, just like the throttle, it has a preload in the back. And I have that about halfway. I'm still going to play with that a little bit and see if I can figure out anything else as far as uh, seeing if I can actually make the difference and I can actually feel the difference. Now, of course, the main thing we're going to be adjusting is going to be the stack. And just like the Pro brake, all you got to do is reach back here and pull these bumpers loose, and the whole thing just rotates up. Very simple, very easy. Um, in fact, if you wanted to, you could, uh, Niels puts a, uh, a special tool for this particular brake. Well, if I can get it back in here, let me get it back over here where I can get it pressed against my chest. I don't have it mounted to my uh, pedal set holder yet that goes on my rig because I have some other pedals mounted on it. But it, anyway, you get the gist of it. Um, this is very easy to adjust. He actually gives you an extra, if, you, if it's too hard for you to pull it, in your little bag of extra parts and goodies and spacers and such, one of these puppies. And this is a little uh, plexiglass or Lexan shaped tool that you would simply just put back here behind the rubber somewhere, right like that. And that gives you just a little more purchase power on the stack when you pull it back. So you can actually put your thumb up front here and just go ahead and pull the whole stack back and it rotates up. Now I have this set up as a GT pedal. If you want to adjust this, it's just like the Pro. If you saw that review, if you didn't, I'll go ahead and do that. You would need spacers and washers to compensate for what you take out of this. If I wanted to set it out, uh, it's a F1 pedal. First off, you can adjust both your stack here, and you can adjust this little pre-pushing preload thing he has here. If you want to take that out, you can take it out just by adding a spacer above this washer here where the spring is inside the spring here. So that's pretty easy to adjust. So you can adjust that part and you can adjust how far it's going to travel as far as the bumpers go. But when you do that and you want to change it, I let's say I want to make this an F1 pedal. I would make, uh, I would change that too. I wouldn't have that much play. I might put like one spacer in there to take that up. But the stack itself, what I'm going to need to do is I'm just going to replace the white ones. So what I'll do is go ahead and pull that out and pull the white ones off. And I'll lay that right there because I don't want to lose that. And I want to use that for my measurement. And again, if you let this washer, just like on the pros, if you let this washer slide down, it'll catch the edge of that piece of metal right there. And the rest of it won't fall off. So if you got it in your rig and you're on your knees and you're doing <laughs> playing around and they're trying to get your stuff adjusted, it's really not that hard. And that'll just keep stu frustration level down because everything came off and dropped down to the bottom of your rig. You have to go hunting ever after everything. So what I'm going to be replacing here is these two bumpers here and one spacer. Whoops. So I have to replace that much length with spacers. So, and he gives you enough spacers to do that with. I have some spacers I'm using somewhere else too, so hopefully I have enough here. And that was a pretty tight uh, stack to begin with too. And I can also add this spacer. So you can see that the stack is not quite where I want it to be. So, but I have other spacers to add on also. We've got some white ones here. And I'm still just a little bit short, and I took that one off, of course, as you saw, and put it on the stack too. Just a hair short. That's probably not going to make any difference. And once I put that on the shaft and get it installed, you'll be able to see that really it's not going to make that big of a difference. So I put these in here all the spacers at once and then I'll go ahead and install the washers and three washers came off of here so I'll put three washers back and now I'm going to put the backing plate back on and one thing about the backing plate let's see if we get a shot of it here you want to make sure this side goes towards the brake pedal not the other side which recessed down inside of there that's the way it came off and you always want to put it back on the way it came off so we'll put that on there, and easy enough to adjust. And now we're all set, except for I have some room down here. So what I would do is I would put a longer spacer here to take up for that. So let's do that. See, I got too much space here now because of the way 
I got that much room left in that bumper. So what I'm going to do is, instead of that short bumper, I'm going to put the tall bumper in there, this guy here. So let's see how that works. Again, very easy. Just pull it out, rotate it up, pull out all your stuff, all your spacers. And this time I'm going to take this guy off too, put the big one back on, and that should take care of everything right there. So get all our spacers back on. Even more spacers. I find all my white ones on. And then I'll put all my washers back on. Pull that back so I can get my plate again oriented orientated properly. And we'll pull that in and see what we got. That's a little bit more, that's a little bit tighter. All right, now I still have the original little bit of play in there, as you can see. But now I don't have any play past that rubber bumper. And once I hit that, I'm pretty much, remember this was as we saw in the durometers, if you watch the uh, durometer measurement section, you can see that this was an 85, which is pretty hard. And once you hit that, it's not really gonna go anywhere. And I could take the additional play out of that if I wanted to by using a couple more of these washers that I have here. All right, so pretty much that's it as far as the adjustments on the brakes. And again, if you had it mounted inverted, you could use these to make the angle on the pedal, Let's turn around this way, to kick the pedal out. And you notice there are holes, just like I said in the overview, there are holes because there's so much force that this brake can take that you wouldn't want slots in there because it just wouldn't hold it. It would slide around. And also, you can see the stop down here is non-adjustable. You just Once you hit it, you hit it, you're done. All right, so that's the brake. Now let's go ahead and do the clutch. Okay, now we have the clutch. And this is a little more complicated to adjust. And if you look on um, Neil's site, he has uh, adjusting it up and down and showing you all the different adjustments that are available to it. Um, I'm gonna do a little bit of shortcut. I'm just gonna show you a quick shortcut on how to adjust this part of it. Uh, the curve on the little arms here. I mean, you move these, the higher you go, the easier it gets. The lower you go, the harder it gets. And also to keep in mind, in this clutch pedal, you're doing kind of a balancing act here. You always want the clutch to kind of look like this, which has the spring pretty straight or even at a little up angle to get the proper clutch feel when you press it. And if it gets that pressure plate spring feel when you press through those springs on the pressure plate and lift that clutch off the flywheel. You, you can get that proper feel with this, but you can adjust the way the clutch feels in a lot of different ways here. But you have to remember, you're doing a little balancing act here. If I move, I want more resistance on the clutch in general, I would just move this up in the slot, which, which would make it harder. But if I move this up in the slot, I have to move the rear bracket also up the same amount. And if I wanted to go all the way to the top, then I would move this all the way to the top here and this all the way to the top there. But you have to make sure they're the same because you always want to end up at the proper angle like this. And actually it looks like it's uh, kicked up a little bit to get that proper feel of the clutch um, action that you get. It's very nice, actually. It's, this is, this, to be honest, I've never felt a better clutch pedal than this on the Pro or this Ultimate. It just feels like a real clutch pedal. That's all there is to it. And I've never had that before. And it's really, really cool the way he came up with this. Uh, just ingenious, th the way it feels. Of course, there's other pedal sets out there I haven't tried yet, so I still got to try those. But I, this is about as close to a real clutch as I've ever felt anything. And it really feels like a real one, not just this amazing. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just show you how if you want to adjust these arms up and down, of course you have to take this assembly apart, but in his video he shows you taking this off and of course you got spacers. You see all these spacers in here? Yeah, if you, you got to take that all, the spacers are going to fall down and you got to go chasing them. And it's not something, definitely something you want to do in your rig. Uh, but here's the way I would do it and do do it. It makes things a little bit easier. First off, I would get my 10 millimeter nut here and I'd loosen it so I could take the preload off. And again, it's got that nice knurled metal piece there for taking the, putting on preload or taking it off. And just get it loose so the spring's kind of flopping around in there a little bit, like that. So you know there's no tension on the back plate. And then we'll take our two five millimeter wrenches and undo the supporting bar for the arms themselves. And it comes off very easy. It's not real hard to do. It's pretty quick, really, if you think, once you, get, once you do it a few times, it's not so bad. And this is just, again, this is very similar to what is in uh, 
the pro pedals, these spacers with the uh, threads all the way through them. All right, so we'll put that aside. Now, instead of taking all this other stuff apart, all I'm going to do is put some pressure on this back plate here, show you how this, and push it towards the front as I pull out on one of the side plates here. So let's see how that works out. And rotate that plate down. See how I just went past that? Just fell right down. So now the other one, of course, comes off easy because we already got it loose. Now I can take this off and take the spring off or leave the spring in there, but probably I would take the spring off. And there's some spacers in here, by the way. You don't want to, it seems like when you pull the spring off, it's kind of pulling the spacer with it. There it is. So that's the spacer. It's uh, actually supposed to fit on top of the shaft here on top of another spacer, this one here. So that fits back on top of that and the spring goes back on. But to keep the spring from flying off and going somewhere under my rig, if I have it mounted there, I'd probably just uh, take it off and put everything to the side while I go ahead and take each one of these screws. Now, this is just a screw and a nut. Uh, it's a three millimeter uh, hex screw and a eight millimeter nut there with a washer. It's a safety nut with a nylon in it. And just take that off and move them up however you want to. But I'm not gonna do that because it's pretty simple. It's just a couple of screws. So then putting it back together is pretty simple. Once I have these arms where I want them and I have them adjusted properly, you can see how they're just kind of falling kind of loose here. That's the way you want them. You don't want them flopping around loose so they've got a lot of play and sideways play in them, but you do want them loose this way. And that's, this is pretty good the way it's sitting now. So I'm just going to put the spring back on now that I have my little plates uh, adjusted. And it slides right back on to that nice knurled knob there. Then I'm going to put this back on. Now this needs to go back on the same way you took it off too. And it's got little dog ears or cat ears, I call them, that are, are oriented to the top. So that's an easy way to remember which way this thing goes. It looks like a little cat face almost. All right, so we'll put that back in. And now, because my spring is still loose, make sure it stays that way, I'll go ahead and put one of these sides back in. Let's just do this one. Get it lined up. And plate will fuck fall right back in there. There you go. So I got one side in. Now I'll just do the same thing I did to take that other side off. I'll pull it up, slide it by there, and bingo, you're in. So that was pretty easy, actually. The hard part is just the, the fiddly parts of getting these screws out and then putting the arm in a different hole, put the screw back in, tighten it back down. That's the fiddly bits. But one thing I'd like to mention here is I've actually adjusted this pedal the way I want it, the clutch pedal. I haven't changed it since I did that. Um, I just haven't felt the need to. So, it's, again, this is probably one of those things you're not going to be doing a whole lot. All right, so once it's back in, first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and put some preload back on it because I want my blue spring to be, to be nice and firm up against that back plate. So I'll do that a few turns here. There we go. That's feeling pretty good. And then I'll get my 10 millimeter locking nut to go back on top of it and just snug it up. Just go this way. Snug it till it starts turning that neural piece, and then I'll just leave it at that. So now we got it all back together. Oh, no, we don't. This clutch can take a lot of pressure, and there's a lot of pressure on it. You can see the spring's a lot bigger than the one on the throttle. And if I just left it like that, as soon as I pressed on it, these plates would just fly sideways and everything just fly off. Because remember, don't forget to put this spacer back in. It's very, very important. It adds a ton of structural integrity to this back piece once this is in and secured properly. So let's go ahead and do that. See, it's not too bad. And again, once you get the clutch f where you like it and where, you f where it's feeling good to, I just don't know how, many, how much you're gonna be changing that. And like I said, it's pretty easy to adjust this. Of course, it's real easy when you're sitting on your uh, bench over here <laughs> adjusting it. And of course, in your rig, it's gonna be a little bit, a little bit more difficult because you gotta get in between the pedals and you're already on your knees underneath the rig or underneath I as far as my rig goes anyway. We also have a stop here that will adjust for that. And uh, there we go. And you can see the stop is actually loose because <laughs> when I pushed it, it pushed it all the way back. So you want to make sure that's not loose. And that's another thing about when you mess with these pedals, there's so many little screws that you might have to undo to get things loose and readjust. You got to make daggone sure you put them tight again because the first time you press on the puddle something can fly off or or something like that but it's not something that's ever happened to me but you can see right there because that was loose that's what happened actually I'm gonna leave it all the way back I'm just gonna leave exactly where it is because I think that's gonna work out pretty well 
on the throw. But like I said, this is easy to adjust. When you get this in there, or you're in your rig and adjusting the stop here, it's pretty easy. It's just the two five mil screws here and slide it back and forth. All right, and of course, again, the clutch has the hydraulic dampener in it, and I can actually feel a little bit of the hydraulic dampener action in the clutch pedal. You can see I'll have it all the way down now. I might play with that again uh, later on, but you can see I have this all the way down also. The slot here and the slot back here is all the way down. This whole bracket has gone down because it has to match, just like I said before. You can't forget that. Right now, it's set up very nice. I really like the way it feels, and I'm going to leave it like that. And I might adjust, again, the travel a little bit, but other than that, I won't mess with it. So that's about it. There's not uh, much else to say about the adjustments available on the pedals. Oh, and the dampener again, just like everybody else, uh, the brake and the throttle has a preload adjustment for the dampener down there also. All right, so let's go ahead and get these things mounted to the pedal tray that I use uh, for the rig and get these puppies installed and do some testing. All right, so we have the Ultimates mounted to the Sim Spirit Stage 4 rig. And I just thought I'd do a little flyby here and show you how the pedals are mounted to the top. And my heel plate is sitting there. And we'll come down, and this is actually mounted on a stack of uh, 2040 series and a 2020 series with the 1010 sitting on top of it. And uh, I'll show you how I, or why I did that later on when I show you my seating position. And we'll go around the side here and look at these huge plates that are holding all this together. And there's eight screws for each plate. And I have four plates on each side. And you can see there the pedals are mounted to the very top of that 1010. There's my heel plate with uh, some anti-slip tape. And it's there the heel plate's actually got 1010 mounting it. Uh, kicks it up just a little bit because I need that little bit of extra uh, height. And we'll go down here. You can see I have three 90 degree two screw brackets down here holding everything to the original plate that came with the same experience rig. Now this is a very uh, heavy duty setup. There is no flex at all in this. If there's any flex at all, it's in that black bottom plate that came with the rig itself. All right, so now we uh, have done a flyby. Let's take a look at why I had to raise the pedal so high to begin with. All right, so what you're looking at now is my seating position when I'm racing. And this is uh, more of a GT type of a seating position. Uh, my butt is about an uh, inch to an inch and a half, maybe even two inches higher than where my heels are resting on the heel plate. I used to have the pedals way down on the bottom, uh, resting on the black plate, maybe an inch or two higher than that, if you count in the frame that the pedals are actually mounted to. And that wasn't very comfortable to me. And the reason I had to raise the pedals so high to get this position is the GS4 seat that I'm sitting in uh, requires two to three inches extra clearance over a normal seat sitting in a SimX rig. So I had to bring the pedals up so that I could get that comfortable GT position. And right now my butt is about an uh, inch and a half higher than my heels. And I got to tell you guys, if you can get your pedals up higher uh, in this kind of position, it's very, very comfortable. You can go long, long distances with uh, no stress in your knees or in your back. It's just very, very comfortable. You'll see a lot of race cars, guys sitting uh, in very similar positions. So I just want to show you why I had to raise my pedals up so high and uh, the results of that. And of course, the pedals, uh, the way they're mounted are pretty straight up and down. And this also helps facilitate uh, a comfort when you're uh, using the pedals um, because you don't have to tilt them way back when they're all the way down on the ground like I had before. And being straight up and down gives you a more leverage or more positive leverage for me anyway. It feels much better when I'm using the pedals in this position. So if you have the means to do that and raise your pedals up higher to get it closer where your plane of your butt is when you're sitting down in your seat, I highly recommend you give it a try. I think you're going to like it. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to the uh, DI view portion where we're looking at DI view and uh, the resolution of these load cells in these pedals. All right, so we have DI view up now, and I just want to show you the settings that I have for these pedals. And currently, the brake pedal is configured in a GT pedal configuration. I was running the Z4 and uh, the Corvette and some other cars that were GT-like instead of uh, open wheelers where I would have it like an F1 pedal. And anyway, we're just going to look at the numbers that I'm getting on this just to give you an idea of uh, what the resolution is as you can get out of it norm in normal use. We'll go with the clutch pedal first. Uh, you can see it starts out over here about 562 or so. And I can get that up to about uh, 2400. So that's a really good range of resolution 
on these load cells uh, and that I really like load cells because of that uh, now there are some uh, uh, resistor or pots out there that can do the same thing but these are great resolutions um, we'll go down to the throttle which is on the bottom here this is the axis that starts out about 789 790 and I can take that up to about 2350 or so to get full throttle which is again a nice resolution it's a nice range I really enjoy using this throttle pedal because it's very easy to uh, put the torque down and put the power down coming out of the turn very smoothly which is of course very very important to get a good run out of a corner and everybody knows if you got a long stretch out of at the other end coming out of a corner then it's you, it's really really important to get a good run without sliding your tires or spinning your tires you want to get good grip good smooth acceleration all the way out now let's get to the brake now the brake remember has that 200 kilogram load cell in it that can take a lot of force a lot more force than I would ever be able to put on it. Um, again, I, I, in a GT pedal setup, where I have it set up right now, um, I can get up to about, I guess it's about 14, 15 when I get it to 100. Uh, well, a little about, let's just say 1400 when I get to 100%. And that's a comfortable pedal feel for me. And that's a pretty good throw. Uh, that's just over 1300 in total throw right there. Now of course I can put a lot more force on this brake pedal in it and it will register it. I can actually push it, uh, I can get like 21 to 2200 on it, it's about all I can push this pedal. And if I do that, and you'll probably hear some stress <laughs> when I do that, if I really jump on it, you can see 22 right there. So, or 23. So I can actually get that, but there's no way that I would drive that way because it's just I wouldn't last very long in a session if I was dry having to press the pedal that hard every time I hit the brakes. It's just, it's just you don't do that. So I've got this thing about 14, 15, again, maybe 14, to for a GT pedal setup is how I would use it. Uh, and then again, once you get into a, a simulation like iRacing, we're going to recalibrate inside of iRacing. So these numbers are really irrelevant once I'm in iRacing, and I'll just again calibrate it there. And I'll do that in a minute when we actually do a demo driving the pedals. But in a set of Corsa, uh, R Factor 2, these numbers would be good. And I've actually run both of those, and the pedals work fantastic. I never had a problem or hiccup with them in either one of those sims either. So that's about it. Just want to show you the raw values and that you can really put a lot of pressure on the pedal. Now we'll go ahead and get into iRacing and calibrate them in there and take them for a spin and see how they look. And uh, you, I'm going to give a uh, superimposed picture of my uh, feet on the pedals while I'm driving like I normally do when I do a uh, pedal set review. So let's go ahead and get to that part. Okay, we're at Mid-Ohio in the BMW Z4. We've already calibrated the pedals in iRacing. So let's drop into the car now, and I'm going to show you the clutch pedal here. I'm going to push on it a few times. There's, uh, it, It's so great, this feeling of this clutch pedal. If you watch it, you can see me just push through right there. It's like right there. You're pushing through the springs in the pressure plate when you engage the, the clutch. And then when you let it out, when you see me take off here, it's just very smooth. You can tell exactly where the clutch is engaging by the feel of the pedal as you're releasing back through those springs on the pressure plate. Very cool feeling. Uh, can't say enough about this clutch pedal. It's the best uh, hands down that I've ever felt. I really like it, uh, <laughs> as you can probably tell. All right, so I thought Mid-Ohio would be a great track uh, because of all the um, off-canter turns and corners and the hills. There's a lot of rises right in the middle of the corner, which is really difficult to put the, uh, the power down. And it's you know, you've got to brake perfectly on the entries on these corners. And this pedal does it so well. Uh, you really can get on it hard and then I'd ease off a little bit for a little bit of trail brake. It's, it's really more of a, you don't see much of the movement of the brake pedal being eased off, but it's, you can see my leg actually relaxing as I ease off the pressure. And being a load cell, of course, it responds to that well. And like here, here's another turn coming around. It's uh, up the hill and then right off down the hill, it's off canter. You really got to watch your speed through here and regulate everything very carefully. You can see I just give a little pressure and then give it full throttle right there. It's uh, the turns in Middle Ohio are really uh, tough turns, especially if you have a powerful car. And of course, when I was driving the Corvette CR6 or the uh, McLaren or the Porsche, it's all the same thing. It's it, you know you got to have good controls to control those cars. And you can see you can just really get on the power just exactly at the points you need to. There's no hesitation. It's just a very smooth action. 
And I have to attribute that, I suppose, to the actual um, dampener that he puts in that accelerator pedal. I mean, the throttle just feels so smooth and, and repeatable. You know exactly where your foot is the whole time. And then again, you can see me release a little pressure on the brake there as I was doing some trail braking through that turn. I'll jump there off the curb, I'm down the straight, and it's so important to get off the curb, or rather off the turn, at the end of the turns, well for these long straights like this. And the speed, you develop all your speed here. Now, hard braking, a little bit of release of the pressure. You can see my leg relax a little bit there for the trail braking, and this brake really, really feels good. It's uh, you know, I don't like it as much as the hydraulics, but I have to say, I think I'm more accurate with this brake, and it feels really good. It's not that it feels bad, it's just how a hydraulic brake pedal just has that special feeling. But as the total package, this pedal set is uh, the top of my list right now, is uh, the best pedal set that I've used to date. It's just the throttle combined with that great clutch, and and the brake is so repeatable. You know exactly where your, your braking is the whole time under your foot. And accelerate through here. And that it just everything combined comes together with such a smooth, liquid feeling uh, operation of the pedals. It's uh, hard to describe. You have to actually use the set for yourself. And I've got this dialed down pretty low, almost as low as uh, the settings will go on the accelerator and the clutch. And it feels really good. It doesn't take much pressure at all, at least to me to use these ultimates, so I'm still trying to figure out, I guess a lot of people want to uh, maybe drive in their socks and it's just too hard as far as pressing these pedals down, it's uncomfortable for them. But I always wear shoes as you can see. And I just love this set of pedals. I can't say enough about them, I, I'm very accurate with them. Uh, I don't know what's going to replace these, probably nothing. I've used everything so far that I could, and so far these are the, as far as usability, uh, there's not another set of pedals that match these, at least to me. Now, you're, you might think there's something else better, and that's fine, but to me, I, I just love this pedal set. All right, so we'll go ahead and finish this lap up and uh, get to the uh, final thoughts. I think, again, coming over these hills, it's just amazing how much control you have on these pedals. All right, come around this hairpin one time, and we'll go ahead and get to our final thoughts now on the pedals, the pros, and the cons. Niels Husingfeld has done a fantastic job with the Ultimate Pedal Set. From the design and implementation to the top flight materials he uses, I'm very impressed with this pedal set. And dealing with Niels during the review process has been an absolute pleasure. <laughs> he never grew tired of my constant questioning concerning different areas of the pedals, and he was also very responsible uh, any time that I emailed him. Let's get to the cons of these pedals. Um, as usual, the first con is going to be the price. At around $1,600, uh, they're expensive, but they're not out of line with other high-end pedal sets that had the same spare no cost build quality to them. And like I said before, it is what it is when it comes to buying the best sim pedal sets currently available. Another con might be that the pedals were designed to be able to deliver uh, the feeling of even the hardest pedal forces that can be experienced in race cars today. Um, they're not designed to be uh, used with socks, and I know a lot of guys like to race sims in the socks, but this is not the pedal set for that, even though there's nothing wrong with wanting to race in your socks, don't get me wrong. Uh, Niels actually told me that some people that originally bought the Ultimate pedals uh, sent them back for an exchange for the Pro pedals. Uh, they felt that the Ultimates were just too hard to press. And I have to agree that they can be very hard to press if set up for the higher force levels that they're capable of. But then, on the other hand, uh, I found that I was able to adjust the pedals that, uh, for me anyway, uh, they did not require that much force and were very comfortable to use, even during a, a long three-hour session that I did. And of course, uh, I wasn't driving that whole three hours, uh, because you go in and out of sessions for various reasons during that time. But still, that's a long time to be using any pedal set. And as you know, I reviewed the Pro pedals first and I installed the Ultimates and ran them for this review and then after pulling them out of the rig to shoot some video with them I put the pros back in and I immediately felt uh, there was something missing and I was very happy to get the Ultimates back in my rig. Uh, they, it really made that big of a difference for me. But then again, uh, we all like different things so what's great for me won't be great for everybody and that's why it's so great to have so many choices these days when it comes to sim pedals. Um, 
that's the only cons I could really think of. So let's talk about some pros. First, uh, you won't find anybody easier to deal with than Niels. He's uh, one of the reasons I had so much fun reviewing his pedals. And as I stated before, the man stands behind his product. If you buy a set of these pedals from him and you decide you don't like them for any reason at all, he's more than happy to exchange them for another set, either up or down the product line, or just refund your money with no questions asked. And I'm telling you, it just doesn't get any better than that. Also, the Ultimates are very flexible as far as mounting options, as we saw in the video, and each pedal's feel has a wide range of adjustabilities. I have to say, this set is now at the top of my list as the best pedal set I have reviewed yet as far as overall features and usability for me personally. But then again, I want to add that they're not for everyone. But because of Neil's customer service policies, you won't risk anything besides maybe some postage by giving them a try. And if you can afford this level of sim pedal excellence, I highly recommend you that you do try them. Now, I still have the HPP pedals to review, and that's going to be in the near future. So don't forget to look for that review and see how they stack up against the Hussingfeld engineering sets. I'm Barry Rowland, and thanks again for watching the Sim Racing Garage channel.